All right, let's move on to number nine. Okay, number nine says sine pi over two is equal to. Once again, look at the answer choices. Do you think I need calculator? Punch it in and get like, whatever the value is. No, look at the answer choices. It says sine four pi, sine three pi over two. I need to somehow know the value and then find the one that is the same. Yes, you could do. You can use calculator to find you know sine pi over two, sine four pi, sine three pi over two. I told you that's kind of barbaric way. You can try every single one of them and find the right answer. You could do that, but it's time consuming. So what are you going to do? Sine pi over 2, sine 90 degrees. What is it? You have to know those values in your head. Sine 90 is 1. I'm looking for 1. That gives me 1, right? Sine 4 pi. What is sine 4 pi? Sine same thing as sine 2 pi, which is 0. Sine 4 pi is 0. Okay, so it is not my answer. Sine 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 is 270 degrees. You have to have that unit circle in your head, okay? So you rotate it 270 degrees. Yeah, you pass the second quadrant, third quadrant, end of third quadrant. What do I have? The height is at the bottom, so it's going to be negative 1, right? So negative 1 is not 1, so that's not the answer. You cross it out. What is cosine 2 pi? Cosine 2 pi, same thing as cosine 0. Cosine 0 is 1, right? So cosine 2 pi is also 1, and that is same as what we want. You get the answer, you move on. You don't even have to check things down here. You already got the answer. All right, number 10. If 1 and negative 4 are both roots of a given polynomial, then which of the following must be a factor of a polynomial? Okay, you got to know the difference between the roots and factor, right? When they say roots, that means the value came out, x is equal to 1, x is equal to negative 4. So that means before it came out, when I factored that, I probably had x minus 1 and x plus 4, right? Before I said x equal to 1 and or negative 4, right? So that, in this format, with the parentheses, that is the factor, or those are the factors. And when you have the answer, those are the roots. So they want to know, what kind of factor do I have? Well, I got that, so I checked it, but it's not in the answer choice. So what do I do? Maybe I have to expand that. So when I do that, I get x squared plus 4x minus x minus 4, right? What happens here? I simplify x squared plus 3x minus 4 could be my factor because that and that is the same thing. So do I have that? x squared plus 3x minus 4? Yes, I do. C. That's it. Get the answer and you move on. I'm going to clear the page, change it to cursor. I'm going to scroll up. I'm working on 11 and 12 now. All right. 11. Figure above, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Usually, I don't read the whole question. I just look at the key uh, things. But it says, basically, y is equal to sine 2x. Okay. I got the graph. And for x being in between 0 and pi. What are the coordinates of a point where the maximum value? I just read the important places here. Function occurs on this interval. Maximum. How do I find maximum? Well, maximum is the highest point, right? That point right there. Let's see. Let's compare between y is equal to sine x and sine 2x. What is the difference? What happened? Sine 2x, because I have that b value, when you learn trigonometry, uh, graphing trig functions, you know that's the b value. It, and the number is bigger than 1, then it shrinks the graph. So the sine x graph shrank by half. So instead of going to 2 pi, which is our original uh, period of a sign, now it went to pi, right? So if that's pi, what is half of pi? Half of pi is pi over 2. Then what is half of a half? It's pi over 4. So I know my maximum occurs at pi over 4. So my answer could be either A or B. Now, how do I know my y value? Where was this before? Wasn't it 1? We didn't change the amplitude, so amplitude is still going to be 1. So you know right away your answer is B. Number 12, figure 2, R sine theta. Whoa, when we have R and theta involved, what topic is that? It is polar coordinate. Okay? If you didn't learn it, that's fine. I'll have a video for a video of uh, individual topics, so you can watch that. But polar coordinate involves r, the radius, and the theta, the amount of angle that it rotates. So, and they're asking you for what is r sine theta. 
uh, you have that triangle. If you want to, if you want to find the y, let's say, what do you do? The angle is looking at it, so that is opposite, and my r is the hypotenuse, right? What involves opposite and hypotenuse? And this is a 90 degree triangle, so it's going to be using so katoa. It's going to be so s o h opposite and hypotenuse, right? So sine theta is equal to opposite, which is y, and hypotenuse, which is r. So what is your y? y is equal to r sine theta. Isn't that what we're looking for? r sine theta? What is it? r sine theta is y. Boom. Pick it. Done. Right? Squeeze it out. Cursor. Slide it up. 13. Uh, do 13 first. 13. If fx is equal to this and f of g of 6 is equal to that, then g of x could equal to which of the following? A lot of students have, even the smart students have uh, difficulty comprehending this sticking in thing. Like, where do I stick that 6 into g and then what do I do with that value? Now you got to put it in the f, but for some reason, uh, for some students, it's they get confused with that. But Basically, when we have composite function, we need to work inside out, okay? So I need to find what g of 6 is. And after I get that number, I got to stick it in the f and do the f of g of 6, right? But in order to get g of 6, I need to know what g function is, what g of x is. But I don't know that. But they gave you options here, like g of x could be this, 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 or this. So my option is, hey, can I stick 6 in these answer choices and put that in the F and see if I get that negative 1 over 3. Let's try that. The first one, if I put 6 in there, my G of 6 is going to be 1 over 6. And if I put that to my F, my first one is 4 times 1 over 6 minus 1. Yes? Then what is that? What is 4 over 6? That same thing as 2 over 3 minus 1. But if you make the common denominator, what does that become? So you got to do these in your head. You don't have time to, and this is not schoolwork or homework, right? You don't have to show step-by-step uh, -step work. So things that you can do in your head, do it. So make the common denominator of 3. You do that, you're going to get negative 1 over 3. Boom. That's what I want, negative 1 over 3. So I tried first one, and I got the answer. Great. I don't need to try it. Answer is A. I'm going to move on. All right. 14. 14. Classic uh, trig problem. Very easy. Uh, a distance of 50 feet from a flagpole. I'm going to have a flagpole here. American flag. Ground. Right? And an angle ground to the top of the flagpole is 42. I'm looking at it. Ooh, try to make a straight line here. Yep, 42 degrees. The reason why they say flagpole or sometimes a vertical cliff is because they, they want to tell you that it's 90 degrees so we can use Sokatoa, okay? And assuming that the flagpole is perpendicular, yes, they said that. What is the height? I want to know the age. And what else do I know that I didn't write here? 50 feet away from the pole. So when I have the opposite and adjacent, O and A, what do I use? That's Toa, right? So tan, 42 is equal to H over 50. H is equal to 50 times 10, 42, right? Be careful. It has to be in degrees. Why? Because the question gave it to you in degrees. Like sometimes students solve the different, you know, the previous questions with the radians and then your mode in your calculator, mode is changed to radian. And then if you keep that and then plug it in, you're going to get weird number. You're not going to get any of these numbers, that's for sure. So uh, whenever you see degrees, make sure your calculator is in degree mode and then punch it in and you will get the answer. The 14 answer should be 45 feet. Okay? I'm going to clear this. Uh, 15, f of x, g of x, and another f of, uh, g of f of 12 thingy. What did I say? we got to work inside out. 12, I'm going to stick 12 in where? In f. So if I put 12 in here, what do I get? 12 minus 4 is 8. So it's root 8, right? So your f of 12 is root 8. What do I do with that? I'm going to stick that in your G. Stick that in the G. So G of F of 12 is equal to 
roots 8 to the third power plus 1. Okay, so what do I do? Well, once again, look, do you think I need to use calculator? No, because it doesn't give me that dirty decimal numbers. It's relatively clean with the square root and all that stuff. So what do I do? I'm going to try to manipulate this. Okay, 8 to the, what is square root and then 3 power? That same thing as 3 over 2 right from the math so what do I do well that's also means is I have a square root and I have three of those eight so eight times eight times eight plus one okay when you have two of the same thing in the square root it pops out so I'm gonna have eight roots eight plus one do I have that in the answer choices no so one more step what do I do eight is made up of four times two right and four can come out of square root so if two comes out is sixteen root two plus one do I have that my answer choice is yes I do I saw it B right okay I'll stop now and I'll continue on my next video